invest and saturate our money supply. And that's where things get scary. And also keep in mind, you know, when you see uh, residential real estate prices coming down, that also, you know, when you have high residential real estate prices, right, a house maybe 20 years ago that was 300000 is now worth, you know, $1.2 million. Those higher real estate values actually support the money that's in circulation. So now that you see housing prices coming down in most parts of the country, that's actually very scary. That's also something that will contribute to hyperinflation. Yep. Uh, absolutely. I see uh, Saudi Arabia going bricks, and then many nations will follow too, but we'll see what happens with that. I would agree with you. I think you're spot on with that. Yeah, they're aligning with Russia mm -hmm. and China uh, and the BRICS nations. So, yeah, they are definitely moving in that direction. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <sighs> um, next common question is, uh, you want to rattle it off, Robert? You have it there. Why don't you rattle it off? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'll go yeah. for it. Um, you know, how do I spend it? And what is, you know, financial apocalypse? I kind of look at the two. It's not that you're spending gold and silver. You know, a lot of people say, okay, you know, what do I do? With, or, okay, Matt, I just bought uh, $20,000 of gold and silver. What do I do with it? How do I spend it? It's the idea is that gold and silver in this system, it's almost like you have to look at two different systems. Right. You have to look at the current system that you're in, which is the Federal Reserve system that we just spoke about. Um, that money's losing value. So you're freezing the value of your money in gold, let's say, right? You're, you're the, the value of that money is being frozen in gold. It's being frozen in time. If if things if they have to continue to admit that the dollar is worth less, your money is just staying as powerful as it was. It's going to have the same spending power before that, right? Before that money, that dollar, that U.S. dollar in the current form starts to drop in value. Um, I do see a scenario where things could get so bad, where the hyperinflation kicks in, our money becomes so worthless that you might see a grassroots movement in gold and silver where the local, you know, I go to the restaurant right across the street here, right at the airport. They might say, hey, we'll take a, a silver coin for, for your lunch, right? We'll take a, we'll take a couple silver dimes. And, and, and I think that's actually probably a likely scenario where you or people would organically, right? Because this movement's organic. It's not going to come from somebody just dictating, hey, here's what you're going to do. Right. I think it's going to come from people saying, hey, we'll, we'll accept that silver coin as payment. There's actually some cowboys down south here who sell bales of hay. If you go down there and give them a, a silver eagle, they'll give you a bale of hay. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's right? pretty cool. It's about the now, price of a bale, but bale I think, of hay. Yeah. Yeah. Can we get silver dimes I don't, I don't in, 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 in don't smaller currency? Uh, get into the question, Lewis. Can we, can we get silver dimes in smaller currency? Yeah, so like a lot of people like small denomination silver, and uh, there's a company called Val Candy who makes gold and silver. They do like a big hundred gram silver bar. I get a lot of demand for it, but I show people the price per ounce on it. It comes out to like sixty three dollars an ounce or something crazy because it's perforated. You're paying for the design. So I just uh, tell people it's like just go the junk silver out. Just go get some silver dimes. They're ninety percent. It's got the stamp of approval from the U.S. Treasury. That's the stuff you want. Right. They, they, they made the term, oh, junk silvers. Anything but junk is probably the best silver money can buy ah. because it's got the stamp of approval from that Treasury Department. That's what you want. Right. So, so I always veer people for the constitutional. Yeah. So they call yeah. it junk silver because, you know, from the conspiracy theorists point of view, they're trying to keep you away from it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's language. Interesting. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah. Great. Great. Great idea to buy junk silver. Dimes, quarters, half dollars. <laughs> Um, yeah, you get the idea. Yeah. So the next question, uh, Matt, that always comes up is, okay, so I've got this pile of silver. What do I do with it? Where do I store it? But if a house burns down, if I lose, you know, that kind of thing. Well, then it melts into one bar. Yeah. Robert, I guess a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many things, there's so many things you can do. I mean, you can get a safe at home. Um, you can build a fake wall. Uh, it really depends upon, you know, what your needs are. You know, if you're storing a couple million dollars, you're probably going to want to invest in something like a fake wall in your house, right? Tear out a wall. That's that's usually a very good way of doing it and still have a safe. So people go after the safe with nothing really in it, right? Kind of use that as a decoy so they think they got everything. Um, you so can spread your, your risk. Your you can Mark, send Matt? <laughs> 625 <laughs> West Deer Valley Road. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, it's it's. 
it's one of those things where a lot of people do get nervous about it. But I'll tell you this is if you call me, I have access to people that can help you select a type of safe. You know, different safes have different fire ratings, right? They come in different sizes, right? The higher the fire rating, the more expensive it is. But hey, if you know you're sitting on two million dollars of of gold and silver at your house, you know, it probably makes sense to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a safe. That's a good investment. Yeah. Right. I would look at, th at that investment as part of your gold and silver investment. So it's all relative. But if you're somebody, you know, buying maybe a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand bucks, um, that's easy to store. You know, you could put that in gold. You could put that on the bottom of a cereal box. You know, just make sure your kids don't throw away the cereal box when they're <laughs> done with it. You know, just little, you know, the, the, the best place to hide stuff, as they say, is in plain sight. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. But in terms of safes, you know, my best friend's a locksmith out here. So, you know, I, I send people to him. He can recommend a safe, you know, based on what they're doing, what they have. Um, so, yeah, that that's easy. But, yeah, people can call me. And I've got all kinds of insights on that on that perspective. OK, next question is, uh, now that I've got all this gold and silver, what if I want to divest from it? What do I do? Instantly liquid. So if you're somebody, let's say, doing business with me, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Let's say you're somebody in New York and you call me up in six months and say, Matt, uh, I bought $50,000 or $100,000 of gold from you. Um, I want to, uh, you know, buy a house and I need a down payment. I would send you an overnight FedEx label. I can insure that package because I'm a gold company. I have the ability to insure gold and silver, right? You need to actually be a gold company in order to insure those shipments. If you walk into UPS or FedEx, they won't insure your package of your gold or silver. Oh, wow. They specifically say, even if you put insurance on it, they won't do it. You have to be a gold company. It's one of the perks we get. So what I would do is I would tell that person, okay, here's an overnight FedEx label, send out to package it up, you know, securely, overnight it to me, we'll insure it with a label. I would receive that and I could fire off a wire instantly to them. So if I fire off a wire before 2 p.m., that money would be in the person's account the same day. That's awesome. Wow. Instantly like Yeah. And around the world, it's liquid. So keep in mind, um, you could go to uh, London, you could go anywhere in Europe, and there's there's coin shops that still exist. They're all over the place. You can go turn in your coin and get, you know, if it's reputable, you can get at least spot price. Hmm. You know, I wouldn't go to a pawn shop, that's for sure. A pawn shop will say, yeah, 200 below spot, they'll rip you off. But, uh, and what's nice about us is that if you do sell back to us, we'll give you the full value. We'll give it to you that from the actual wholesale price that we pay, which is above spot. Yeah, I think that's one of the the bigger questions. The other um, the other side to that is, uh, you know, you talked a lot about IRAs and retirement funds, and those could be converted to gold as well, can't they? Correct. Okay. So with a, with a retirement account, you need to use an IRS approved depository. It's some people do the home storage model. I don't like it because it's not compliant, right? In other words, there was a case uh, I think about two three years ago where the IRS really came down on these things. Um, I would say if you're really paranoid about putting in a depository, then just say you're probably paranoid about the system, then maybe consider just liquidating the IRA, turning it to physical gold and physical silver and taking possession of it. I happen to feel very good about these depositories. The ones that I like to use are like in Texas. There's another one in Nevada. I tend to like those. Um, and it's product specific. So if you did, let's say, uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollar IRA in gold and silver, you could do, you know, fifty thousand dollars in gold eagles, fifty thousand dollars in silver eagles. You want to put some bars in there, we can do it. It's all product specific. It's not just like a piece of paper saying, Hey, you own gold, congratulations. No, it's the actual physical product specific stuff. What you pay every year is you just pay storage. Storage is like somewhere around like 170, it's like two hundred bucks call two hundred bucks a year. So you just pay storage fee and that's it. And I'm not a money manager. I'm just a gold dealer. So it's not like you're paying me, you know, some commission every year to, you know, maintain your gold. And so you just pay a storage fee. That's it. You know, for us, it's just an opportunity to sell somebody, you know, hundred thousand dollars of gold or silver, right? Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. And you can always have that delivered. So if you ever want that delivered from the depository, right, you can do that. You can actually, you know, it's a distribution in the eyes of the IRS, but nevertheless, you can get it delivered. You just have to pay for the shipping on. So you do have the ability to, um, take possession and really freely trade on it in an IRA, the same as if you were in possession of your own gold and silver. So I think people like that. And it minimizes the security risk, right? You don't have to worry about security. And one thing I'll add is um, the depositories are not banks. So you have effectively, like one of the big things about the gold IRA, and just 
gold and silver in general is you're getting your money off these bank ledgers, right? These bank ledgers are just, it's dots and teetles on a computer screen. That's where your money is right now. That's really the message I want to send is that when you examine where your money is right now, whether that be checking, savings, IRA, 401k, it's just digits on a screen, right? It's controlled by some bank, some company. What's great about the gold IRA is the fact that you're, you're just buying gold in general. You're taking that digits on a screen and you're turning it into something real and tangible, turning it into real money. So it's out of the bank ledgers, right? And these these depositories for IRAs, what's nice about them, they're security facilities. So, you know, down the hall from your uh, gold and silver are, you know, Picasso paintings and valuables. It's not uh, – uh, if the bank sy banking system went down, these guys are not attached to it. They're just – their vested interest is, is just keeping things – Secure and safe. That's it. And they and you have the blessings of the IRS. Everybody complains about the IRS. I kind of like them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. How far can you go there? <laughs> I like so, them. So I, I don't like uh, these guys. So there's there's a lot of hubbub in the last ten years with cryptocurrency, right? I mean, a lot. Mm -hmm. I I see in the future after all the financial systems come down and they're rebuilt, the only way crypto is going to work if they attach themselves to gold and silver as that, yeah, that, that's, that's the way they're going to value them. So you, you agree with that. I don't see another way that they could actually do to, it because it's just a Ponzi scheme at this point. Exactly. Yeah. You have to have the tangibles. That's the way money's supposed to work. I fully agree with you. I think there'll be some type of, you know, maybe some digital ledger, that they'll put on top of the, the gold and silver that backs it. Um, yeah, I I totally agree with a scenario like that. As a matter of fact, I would listen to uh, Juan's take on some of this stuff. He he brought up some interesting points to uh, kind of the crypto space as well as the gold and silver space. Juan, Juan Pablo Escobar? Who, who are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> 107. Oh, okay, that guy. That Got guy. It. Yeah. That, that guy. Yeah. The other day about this stuff and it sounds like gold and silver is really the place you want to because my, my whole thing with with cryptos is that um i think a lot of them were invented by darpa i mean look at bitcoin for example yeah bitcoin you know created by some japanese guy that no one's ever seen or heard from you know satoshi nakamoto uh, and and think about the storyline on bitcoin it's like it's like a liberal fantasy where oh he just so virtuously gave up eight hundred thousand of his bitcoin because he just wanted he just wanted to have a real money system and just give freedom to the people yeah it's like virtue virtue signaling 101 all you hear yeah. is liberals yeah. nothing to do with that nothing to do with that and what would prevent them from starting you know bitcoin 2 and bitcoin 3 and so on and so forth blockchain's great don't give me what blockchain's great but right i don't think i don't think this first round of cryptos that we've seen over these years i don't think these are the ones i don't no, think, I think they're the ones yeah. i think the crypto I think they're going to go. I think away. there's another set of them. That are, yeah, I think I think there's a whole set that even developers are getting ready for that. They understand that this is just a this is just the facade. The real stuff's coming behind it. Yeah, I and agree. that's why I think I, that's why I think really honestly, and I just say not because it's my business, but because my just my own personal experiences. I really think gold and silver is a great place to be right mm -hmm. now. There's going to be so much opportunity on the far side of this. It's going to be glorious, the far side of this. When we rebuild this country, it's going to be glorious. And if you have real money, tangible constitutional money to deploy, I think I think a person could make themselves extremely wealthy with very little. You know, get a little silver. You know, call me up for 500 bucks of silver. Take that, put it away. That's an opportunity that's going to uh, allow you to reinvest in the future in this country where I think the future is going to be absolutely mind-blowing. And I think Trump's uh, he's the guy he's the guy you want orchestrating this stuff. Yeah, it's exciting. I think we're in exciting times right now. I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm pumped. I'm ready for whatever's coming. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit, uh, Matt. You said, hey, give me a call, uh, you know, put five hundred dollars in silver. Uh, let's go through some of the mechanics of that uh, for certain number one, purchasing uh, gold and silver outright. And then number two. Uh, you know, the retirement fund, the IRAs, uh, that kind of thing, the 401ks. What's the process there? So on a cash purse, it's very simple. You can send in a check. Uh, we just don't take credit or debit card, right? That's the only thing because somebody in theory could receive the gold and then just say, oh, I never ordered that, right? Um, so we just take check. Uh, you can do certified check. You can do uh, money order if you wanted to. 
Uh, bank wire is usually the best because it's quick, it's clean, right? Gets in immediately. I get the stuff out. Yeah. Um, so you just send in whatever funds you want to allocate, and we just ship it out to you. FedEx, you know, fully insured, uh, you know, signature required. So, you know, if you're getting a quarter million dollars delivered to your doorstep, they're not going to just leave it there. You're going to have to sign for it, right? It comes completely anonymously. So the FedEx driver has no idea who it, you know, what it is, right? There's no markings on it. It's all, you know, confidential and it's insured. So God forbid, you know, somebody did lose a package. Um, you wouldn't be on the hook for that. You know, we would, we, we have insurance on it. You'd get sent a package the next day. Um, as far as the IRA, IRA is very simple. You would just call up, uh, you'd call me up. We would do an application to, to establish what's called a self-directed IRA, right? And that's just the type of IRA that can accept physical gold and physical silver, right? It's a self-directed IRA. Nothing changes. You know, there's no taxable event. You're just moving from, you know, let's say rolling out of a 401k or you're just moving laterally from your traditional IRA or if it's a Roth, right? If somebody has a traditional, let me just also say this is somebody has a traditional and a Roth, you would actually have to open up two separate accounts to keep those two tax statuses separate. Right. So if somebody's thinking about rolling over a Roth, I don't want to think I don't want them to think like, oh, now I'm going to get taxed. And I just that right. Some people think that. But, yeah, you're just moving it over tax free, penalty free. It moves over as cash. Right. You liquidate. Let's say it's one hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You liquidate your positions. You move that over to your to your new self-directed IRA. Um, and then you just buy the physical gold and physical silver and we mail it out to or not mail it. We FedEx it out to uh, the depository of your choosing. And I usually, as I said, Texas or uh, Nevada are really the ones just because I like the localities. You know, I think there will be some problems in certain parts of the country. I don't think Texas is going to be one of them. True. True. Sounds like it's pretty straightforward. So the the first step is to uh, get on the phone with you, right? Simple stuff, man. Simple stuff. And your viewers are great because it's like, it makes the job fun. You know, it's like I get like, I get to talk to like-minded people all day. Um, you know, people from your show, it's like, what, what's nice is when people tell you stuff you didn't know. And that's like your viewers, you know, they'll be right. like, oh, did you hear this? I'm like, no, it's, <laughs> it's nice. It's like an information exchange. You, you feel like you're dealing with, I think that's what people want is people just want to deal with like-minded people these days on every front, you know, whether it be this stuff or anything else. You know, I'm so sick of, you know, the way things had, you know, just people of the past and these mindsets of some people you see. It's just obnoxious. But yeah, you give me a call. You know, I've got uh, up here on my shelf. I'm in, I'm in my office today because our computer broke down in, in there. But uh, this is actually my office. I got George magazines up there. I've been sending out. We did the free silver for the viewers. So I hope everybody enjoyed their uh, one ounce silver American Eagle. But yeah, give me a call. I'd love to love to always talk with your audience. Yeah, we'll put the phone number Great up group. here too. You can reach uh, Matt at MidasGoldGroup.com or call him directly 480 480- Seven two five zero five three six. That's four eight zero seven two five zero five three six. Matt, anything else you want to leave us with before we wrap up for today? Yeah, just make sure they mention uh, both your names. You know, just say hey, came in through Lewis and Robert. That way, you know, because everybody like I was sending these out to people. You know, the Dylan Mulvaney's. Um, you know, I sent out George, you know, anything I find kind of cute and fun, I'll, I'll mail it out. So yeah, definitely mention you guys. So that way, um, you know, I know, uh, I know what to send, but yeah, thank you, you know, for having me as always. And, uh, I look forward to, to seeing you guys, uh, soon. We appreciate you, Matt, and appreciate you sponsoring the show and, uh, your, uh, a wealth of information on this topic. So, uh, Lewis and I are real happy to be working with you. Feelings mutual. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Lewis. Appreciate you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much, and we'll uh, see you on our next show.